So after bringing in like four other doctors to look at it, it turns out it's not a rash, it's a fungus. Oh, that's cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Because it's, it's a lot easier to treat it, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Just with other fung fungi. Yeah, you know, so that's good. Oh, we're, we're here. Mm, here we are. Here we are. You're, you're all here. Okay. I cut that little well, uh, bit out there. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm sure the music is playing over it anyway. Um, all right, well, let's do this. Uh, welcome to the Video Reformation Podcast. I'm Ben Oliver. I'm Justin Plant. We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides uh, to practicing effective video for business. We're like the Pi May to your Beatrix kiddo in, Google that in your journey you. to becoming the world's greatest assassin in the Kill Bill films. Beatrix kiddo. Yeah, that's her name. That's cool. Yeah. There's so many badass chicks in that movie. I love those movies. Those that's uh, especially the uh, the fight between Oren Ren, Ishii yeah. and oh my god I, yeah. just the, that scene and that music and the music he does such a great job with oh his music. my god so good um, Brian Singer that's right that's mm -hmm. who we are. <laughs> I found out he's done a lot Brian Singer's done a lot more than I was thinking he's been around forever he's all the X Men did Bohemian Rhapsody yeah didn't he get uh, I think he started Bohemian Rhapsody and then got fired maybe maybe during it. But I was, think like, it was a, calling in hmm. and telling people. I don't know. That was a mess. Yeah. Um, Should we go in that direction? Yeah. To, <laughs> the V2 action direction? Or, yeah, live action scripted. That's what we're going to be talking today. Uh, today is part two of our types of video series. Um, we're going to be talking about live action scripted video. But, of course, a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, we've actually gotten some requests for, um, for episode topics hey. from our audience. So thank you so much to our listeners. Uh, keep it coming. Um, again, we can keep coming up with ideas uh, every week, but uh, if it doesn't, and we shall, and and we shall, but if you know if it isn't something you want to hear about, then what's the point? So, uh, thanks to our uh, our listeners who have shared those, and those are on our list of upcoming episodes. Um, we also have a new sponsor this episode. Um, our new sponsor, we can't seem to keep one around for some reason, is. I think it's the delivery. I don't know what, what it is. Is it, I, it, is it my, the banter afterwards that they dislike? I don't know. All the checks have cleared, mm -hmm. but they just they don't answer phone calls when we want to do a second. Yeah. Um, you, we just never hear from spot. them again. So I'm super distracted right now because I just got a Slack message from Jeff. Jeff says shalom. All right. Okay. So where well. were we? Um, I was looking up. I think Middle maybe I had just teased that our new sponsor this episode is... And you didn't get that. You didn't quite get that far. No, I did. I did. I, you, you may not realize name. it, but PandemicVoiceOvers.biz oh. is our new sponsor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, they've uh, they've done up a nice little spot uh, that, we'll, uh, that we'll read off later in the episode. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I think I've heard of them from a recent project we were doing. <laughs> yeah. There, <laughs> there are some, some, uh, some parallels. Yeah. Um, okay, so part two of our types of video series, is live it? action scripted video. It is. What was the other one? The other one was, let's Just talk about all the types. The types, okay. And then at the end of that one, we said, so let's pick one. Okay. And we did, and that's why we're doing okay. this one now. Um, so live action scripted, we're going to talk about, you know, what it is, which is kind of self-explanatory. Um, why to use it, when to use it. Um, how to make it, um, and then I imagine we'll come up with some discussion along the way that yeah. might take us off topic or, or whatever. But um, in my notes for the episode, uh, bullet point one here is what is live action scripted video? And you a, have an a and a B. And right? A and a B. And my A is it's live action. Okay, so that takes care of the first two thirds. Okay. And then B, which we'll get to next, it's scripted. Okay, so that's that's. All three parts. Yeah. Okay. Now, to be less dickish about it, um, of course, we're talking about live action as opposed to animated. Yeah. Which are the yeah? I think the two are two very yeah. So live broad, action is this they're broad, right? Yeah. For, for the for the less familiar, and to be even less condescending or more condescending, depending on your perspective. This is live action, right? So this using is using an actual camera. This is an actual camera with actual 
people or settings or props mm-hmm. or whatever that you're actually capturing. You're not drawing or animating or digitally creating yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, you might add things to it that are digitally we, created. We've done live action that had no people in it. Sure. Remember for Teamworks, there was a kind of like we used props, the props. and yep. titles mm-hmm. to kind of... Um, we can link to that one. Actually, we'll, maybe we have to save that for one of our part six or something. Maybe we do. And then, of course, the scripted part, I think, is really important because when you think about live action and you think about having someone on camera, a lot of people's first thought is probably testimonials, like a doc-style kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And if it's, not a, if it's not a testimonial, it's a... It's a business CEO leader or yeah. whatever, you know, talking to an interviewer over here while the camera's actually over here. And, and, and so to me, that's that's unscripted, right? That's kind of a doc style live action. Yeah. We're going to do an episode about doc style content. Mm-hmm. But the differentiator here is that it's scripted. And I think the real benefit of scripting is that you get to kind of craft and hone your message. Mm-hmm. You really get to dial in on what you want to say and how you want to say it. Mm-hmm. Whereas with with any kind of doc style, whether it's you know an executive or a customer or whatever, you're kind of guiding a conversation and then you're editing together the message. Yeah. So scripted, the messaging comes before the shoot. Doc style, a lot of yeah. the, the messaging comes in the. Edit I wouldn't say after one is shoot. necessarily more efficient than the other. Some of it depends on what resources you have. Yeah. Um, do you have writers? No. Well, then you might just go with <laughs> some interview stuff. Um, obviously, there are writers out there that you can you know hire for this sort of thing. But well, and I think I've talked about this before too. One of my kind <clears throat> of pet peeves about everybody thinking of testimonials first, mm-hmm. or that or even that doc style tough stuff first, even if they're getting like their CEO on. I think it's between because as a marketer they don't really know how to message their company their product really and so they're they're relying on other people to tell them Mm -hmm. and then they take those pieces and they put them together instead of being able to look at a blank page and i get it i mean i'm a better editor than i am a writer yeah just because you're a marketer doesn't mean you're creative right you might just be really good at lead gen technology yeah. and you could be a really good <laughs> nothing wrong with it there. yeah um and you could be a really good you know uh put a put a page of of completely incoherent text in front of you and you can turn that into something mm-hmm. but if you have to stare at a blank page you can't get anything oh out. yeah i, mean, so I totally say, get that. say that again you're a better what i'm a better editor yeah like of writing not 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 necessarily a video even i'm a better editor than i am a writer mm-hmm. so a better like like tweaker than creator. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it's depressing because I don't see myself as a creator. We create a lot of things, but I see my role as taking things that have been thrown on a table and then piecing together Mm -hmm. the right parts. Mm -hmm. But if I'm I'm looking at a blank page to write a blog post, that is really hard for Mm -hmm. me to do. But if somebody ghost wrote it for me, I can go back and I can put it into my voice and say what I want to say. It's just... And I think a lot of people are like that. It's just like, I can correct things yeah. better than I can make things. And in which, in, the, in that case, you're asking someone to say as much as they can and spill their guts, and you're hoping you can turn that in and polish that. Yeah. Whether it's a turd or it's a gem, yeah. you're going to polish it. And, and I get for a lot of marketers, that's part of the process, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, we talk, part of the reason we do these podcasts is... Because we have so many ideas that are abstract ideas, but having to actually have a conversation about them, having to talk about them, having to verbalize them, Mm -hmm. hear them back, helps you refine those ideas. Mm -hmm. And I totally get where, you know, a marketer who's new to a company uses their first three or six months to hear what a whole lot of people have to say so that they can then say, this is how we need to position Mm -hmm. ourselves. So it's not to say that there's anything wrong with that at all. It's just some people's process. It happens to be when our client, when, you know, when we hear from someone, I want to do testimonials, it's like, okay, well, why? So um, <clears throat> I would say that um, live action is, is common, right? I mean, it's one of two basic types of video, live action or, or animated. Yeah. And a lot of companies, like you were saying, tend to go with live action to show their CEO or show their subject matter experts 
And, and when they do it in that doc style, I think that's fine. You can do your best to craft that into a coherent story or message. But when they put employees like subject matter experts on camera as a as an expert, that's where, in some respects, I feel like they have to, that they should be crafting that message beforehand. Mm-hmm. Or even just outlining it or something. That should not go necessarily unscripted. Right. I'm trying to think of having no. I think that's something. a good. No, I think that's a good point. I'm thinking of an old client, because then that gets into a whole side conversation about that again we've had before about using employees versus actors. Right. Right. And so the those subject matter experts are the people we've always kind of put that asterisk on. Yeah. Right. If they're a subject matter expert and they're talking about what it is that they know about, then yeah, you don't need to have an actor for that. But they still do need to craft craft those. And it thoughts. might just be only them who can who can create that. Yeah. And they can work with someone in marketing or someone in you know, content or whatever to Because to I think so it. so many of those it probably ties to what we were just saying about about verbalizing it. So many of those subject matter experts have such a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Even if they go through and kind of bullet point out what they want to talk about, once the camera starts rolling, they just start getting into the weeds. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not even necessarily if they're nervous. They just start sharing all of the details yeah. about everything because they may have written it down. And, and organize their thoughts, but that that just means that they know to go from point A to point B to point C, yeah. not to do it in three sentences, but it may take them five minutes to get from A to B, mm-hmm. and seven minutes to get from B yeah. to C. And so, yeah, I think that I think that is an interesting in between ground. I th- but I also think it's part of the the reason that people that video creators tend to shy away from scripted content at the beginning is because it feels harder because there's more work to do up front. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how much of it has to do, I I suspect a lot of it has to do with thinking that video is clicking record, right? I think think it's similar to um, when uh, we sign a new client, we ask for their branding guides, guidelines. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of their um, imagery and stuff designed for a certain type of content. They've got um, files that can only be used in print right. for, for, for their logos or whatever. They have their voice, their their messaging, the, that kind of stuff. But rarely is that ever adapted for video content. Mm-hmm. And just like branding needs to have its own video angle to it i think that um like their voice also needs to have a video angle to it as well and if you don't develop those things you don't know how to get started and so you just put anybody on camera and hit record and you wind up with like oh i don't even know if this is any good right and sometimes you have to experiment just to figure out if that's if that's working or not, like I, I would suggest that someone just go start if they want. If they want to do video, just fucking start. So, right. And yeah, pick somebody, put them on camera. You may never publish any of that. But I would challenge our listeners who are in the early phases. And again, I just I feel like I see it eight times out of ten. I don't have hard data for it, but just anecdotally, if you're newish to video and you're hesitant to try something scripted just write out a script try something do one even if you don't plan to use it because i think and then if you go through the whole process i think you'll understand how crafting how you want to present your message up front then shooting for that and then editing that that whole process is going to end up being a lot shorter even if the front end takes 10 times longer than for unscripted shoots. Your shoot will be more productive. Your shoot will be more productive and your editing will be a whole lot easier. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you know, as a video editor, I'd much rather edit a scripted yeah. video than an unscripted video. So when it comes to scripted, um, we were kind of talking about that, that gray area where a non-actor is doing something that's slightly scripted. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a, an official live action scripted video that an actor should be delivering those lines. Yes. Does that make it? Does that make it 
officially a live action scripted? Uh, you can do it without. I, I think I think you can do scripted content with employees. Uh-huh. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It can be difficult it, to pull off. It because there are so many things that professional professional actors know to do and not do mm-hmm. that that help the shoot. I, I mean I guess if I were a video maker in house at a company and I had limited resources and I was doing the shoot and the only resources I had forced me to use employees, I'd do that. But if I were the video person at a company and I was bringing in a production company, I would not force that production company to work with non-actors. Because... Given your experience. Given, yes. Because the the professional production people, uh, you're bringing them in for the same reason you would bring in a professional actor. Right? The, the production crew is going to know how to light it, how to set up audio, mm-hmm. where to put it, they're going to be how to direct, uh, you know, how to direct. But, you know, your your professional actors know one, they, they come prepared mm-hmm. knowing what they need to mm-hmm. say. They're also used to getting changes to the script during shooting. Yeah. And so they're flexible enough to, to work with that. They also know the little things like when camera is setting focus and the lighting is getting set up and they're asked to stand on their mark. They need to stand don't still and move. don't move, right? Yeah. And and you know, uh, non actor employees will you know make invariably makeup jokes. make makeup jokes or you know talk about how they're a method actor because insert <laughs> like joke here. Um, but uh, you know, the professional crew needs to get done what they're what they need to get done, and so you need to put that professional person in front of the camera mm-hmm. if you've got professional people behind the camera. So that would probably be my kind of altered guideline there for, you know, if it's a totally in-house shoot, then yeah, you can get away with it. But if you're paying a crew to be there, pay for an actor also. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm projecting on our listeners, but I think when you think of a live action scripted video like one of the first things that comes to mind is um shoot who are the um now, and now they make like a toilet paper a shade dollar shave club okay i think that's like what i think that's the easy option for a lot of people is oh let's have this kind of crass direct um confident fast-paced comedic per you know delivery mm-hmm. so we need to write something like that but what are some other styles you might suggest what kind what do you mean styles like that's a that's kind of its own type of concept video. kind of yeah. yeah um there's a lot well, I think that worked for them because that was part of the brand and who they wanted to be. And it hadn't really been done either, so it was right. like new and right. Had I a- mean, you could argue that that Squatty Potty and Tushy and Purple Mattress, um, none of them would have the campaigns that they have now if it weren't for that original Dollar Shave Club campaign. Uh-huh. But there's also a certain production value, and I know there've been a lot of articles about how much that uh, Dollar Shave Club. Uh, add costs to produce but the asterisk in all of those articles is that it was a friend of the co-founders yeah and so you know it it costs like 750 dollars or whatever but that's just because he had to pay one lighting guy that he had to bring in and he did it you know for free he was a filmmaker yeah um so but i but i think i i think that to me is like that's a that's a commercial Mm -hmm. right there's so much other content especially for b2b brands that needs to be created and it needs to be controlled. Yes, good. So a, as you get lower down in the funnel, you need to be more specific. And I, I mean, you're talking about more specific issues, more specific features, more specific, you know, how this thing actually works. And so you need to be careful about how you talk about that. Mm-hmm. And you're also, as you get further down in the funnel, you're just inherently speaking to fewer and fewer people. Mm-hmm. Um, so where you may at the top of the funnel for your Dollar Shave Club commercial have this 
broad, um, you know, uh, appeals to everybody kind of voice mm-hmm. or words. Mm-hmm. The further down you get, even they have to talk about like what they use to make their razors, right? Yeah. And all of the accessories that go with it. But that's just not all in the top of the funnel piece. Mm-hmm. So it just gets easier and easier to say, I, you know, and, and yeah, it's not a complete tangent, but, you know, when we, we've talked before about like how to do your first quick video strategy, and that's basically look at your personas, look at the questions they're asking throughout their journey mm-hmm. and create videos to answer those questions. Mm-hmm. This is the same exercise I would do is I would take those questions that my personas are asking, I would write out answers to them. And then I would have someone or myself take a look at it and read it back and say, does this sound how, like how I would talk? Mm-hmm. Right? Because writing for video is a lot different than writing for the page. Yeah. R- writing for how you talk. And so once you put that on it, then you can put that in front of any professional actor. And they can deliver that. And you can crank out a ton of mid and bottom funnel content without having to worry about making this big production commercial. Right? It's something you could do with your webcam. Yeah. With the script on the screen below yeah. you, yes. even in an asynchronous 100%. one-on-one sales video kind yeah. of thing, right? It's still scripted. Like the stuff we did for for Lucidworks, it's scripted, it's yeah. live action, but it's educational. It's not like a commercial. And those were means. very vetted scripts. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are scripts who were written by a subject matter expert, mm-hmm. run through one of our writers, mm-hmm sent to an even more technical subject matter expert for round three within the company, and then back to us for, for final round four yeah. screenwriting. Mm-hmm. And so everything there is is technically accurate, yeah. but also accessible yeah. to an audience that doesn't necessarily have those technical skills mm-hmm. uh, or knowledge. Um, to you know, pat ourselves on the back, good job on that one, I guess. On that. So yeah, I, I you know going back to the original question, I think I think the the Dollar Shave Club image is this high budget, high reach, um, high concept, um, broad messaging that is designed to get attention, and so it needs certain care and work and talent and skill and all of and that pizzazz. But I totally get, and I totally get how that can be off-putting to someone who's trying to figure out just how to do more accessible scripted yeah. stuff for their brand. Yeah. And there's 90% of the funnel that's left right. to create very specific content that is actually better because it is scripted than mm-hmm. before the shoot than edited after the shoot. And maybe that's what we've kind of landed on today is the big difference is preparing the messaging before the shoot or compiling the messaging after the shoot. Yeah. It's kind of the difference between the live mm-hmm. action scripted versus live action unscripted or yeah. doc style. So we talked a little bit about when to use live action doc style, but when would you decide to use scripted content that's not live action, like animation, for instance? Sure. I feel like I've been doing all of the answering. Do you want me to ask you that? Um, I- I'll jump in. Okay. <laughs> Um, or I can start. I like that's a great question, Justin. Uh, I would say when um, at least one opportunity. There's there's several we'll probably get to here, but one place where I would use scripted animation video content. Well, is there a way to use unscripted animation content? I yes, yes. Well, yeah, let's, I let's suppose go, let's there get is. to it because I think that's really fun. Yeah, I guess there could be. Like, not on the surface, but if you really wanted to argue it, I think you could argue that anything doc style with a lot of animation is. We just did some. Yeah. But it has like, it's a mix of live action and animation. It is. But there's like, I look at something like Waking Life. It was, it maybe it was scripted, but it came across as very real conversations that real people were having. Mm hmm. Um, and yes, it was shot and then painted over. They painted over the film, but adapt that to, to to like, just a. Let's say you have two subject matter experts in a room like us talking. Um, actually, they do this a lot for like a uh, bunch of fans do this for like Joe Rogan podcast. They'll take the conversation that's that's being, just, you know, whatever's being discussed, 
and then someone will animate to it and they'll they'll cut mm. to like funny mm-hmm. scenes or whatever but you never actually see joe rogan you see a, a, an animated character that looks like joe rogan mm-hmm. um and that could be that could, that's really fun in fact i would like to think about doing that more for some clients yeah um but that that is probably some of the most work you will ever have to do for a video. Well, yeah, because what you have to do is, is again, going back to what we were just talking about, is you end up crafting the messaging after the shoot. Right. So you have to have the shoot, edit it to craft the messaging, and then hand that off to an animator to animate to the edited message. It's incredibly inefficient. It takes for fucking ever. Yes. <laughs> And it's, it's required because it's doing all the stuff you do for an un, for a doc style shoot. Finishing maybe it, not camera. Finishing it. Yes. And then starting the animation, the animation process. Yes. It's um, it's inefficient. We can we should reconsider how we sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're interested, let us know. It'll be really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or we can you know pilot our new unscripted animation project with you. Um, okay, so so scripted animation. Mm-hmm. Where would you use scripted animation? I might I might use it to like where you can't actually show an API. Yes. Sure, you could show the coding on the screen. It's not that cool. What you need to show is what it does. And mm-hmm. if you, if it's impossible to show how this is a payment gateway for many different countries regulations and internet policies and whatever like it's best to do that through animation i feel like it's way more efficient than going and shooting all these various things that may not even really cohesively fit together as well as trying to shoot something that doesn't exist yeah right i mean we ideas. have if you try we to have, shoot an we idea. have literally shot microchips for a client yeah right yeah but it doesn't it doesn't work just showing the chip because the chip has like a plastic side and then it has like the cool metal side with all the pins and, mm-hmm. and everything, but you can't by looking at it understand is this a you know Bluetooth transmitter and this is a you know GPS mm-hmm. um, processor and this is I mean it it you can't tell unless you're like literally drawing lines in mm-hmm. and saying this is what this is, yeah. so you just can't do it. And then of course when it's an API, you could show code, but nobody's gonna know. No one wants what the code does. And nobody should even really nobody except for the like the person technical person implementing it on the back end who already knows what it's doing. Yes, <laughs> they don't need to see how it works because they know. Because how it oftentimes works. those people aren't the people making the purchasing decisions. Right. Right. That's exactly where I was going to go with it. When you've got something technical, code, API, some kind of software kind of thing, or, software or ideas. versus hardware or ideas, it's just so much easier to literally draw it out mm-hmm. than to film something that inherently isn't visible. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that you can't create through metaphor and things like that live action versions sure. of things, right? You could certainly put people in in, you know, purple leotards and have them represent you know, electrons doing a certain <laughs> thing that does somewhat something. Yeah. You could do That's that. That's a fun but, creative approach. Yeah. But, and, and I think, and, and this may be a controversial take on it, I think there's a certain, I think the SaaS space has almost gotten itself to where if you don't have on some level an animated explainer video, you're not providing people what they expect. Mm-hmm. And, and as a, as a creator of content, I hate to, lose the argument that you know just you have to do it because someone expects it but as a business marketer if someone expects it you kind of have to do it and so and so as 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 much as there's a creative conflict between like you know everybody's doing it so you got to do it but like everybody's doing it which is why I don't want to do it yeah yeah it i mean if if your audience is genuinely looking for it and you're not providing it it's going to be harder to sell them something um, and so sometimes you just have to understand, and that's why it's important to to look at what your competitors are doing, also, mm-hmm. right? If you are in the subscription shaving space, you know that Dollar Shave Club did what they did and do what they do. But if you are a you know an API add-on for HubSpot, 
you should be paying attention to what all of the other HubSpot mm-hmm. APIs yeah. and what HubSpot is doing and, and you know, speak the same language at the very yeah. least. Be part of that environment yeah. instead of contrasting it because it just won't connect. I think, I think... I think live action, so I think, and this is why we have this series, is is when we get into the animation episode, we'll talk in more depth about how to do those things. But since this is the live action scripted episode, I think the, the advantages to live action scripted over animation is that it helps you put actual faces to your product, to your brand, right? It helps humanize your brand. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to do that with animation. Um, Because even if you were taking the waking life rotoscope effect and you filmed your CEO and then painted over them, Mm -hmm. that dehumanizes them, right? Because you're not really seeing them, you're seeing an abstract representation of them. So being able to see faces and see voices I mean, so much of our communication is nonverbal. Yes. Which is what makes live action so incredible. I, you know, and, and being able to hear someone's voice and, and see their face, see their nonverbal communication, right? We always talk about the advantage of video is showing and telling. So you get to process the information that they're telling you, but you also get to see, are they excited about what they're talking about? Are they really weirdly, (laughs) right? I was trying to throw you off with nonverbals, right? Exactly. But if I'm doing this... I don't know. It's just kind of interesting how much. No, you, it, inside I was like, "What am I saying? Yeah, what are the words exactly. that are coming out of my mouth?" Exactly. Is it, am I dreaming? Um, For those of listening, Ben was <laughs> talking, and instead of nodding and agreeing, I was just shaking my head, and you could see the consternation <laughs> and all these lines in his eyebrows start to move. <laughs> uh, it's like, and actually, if you play, it, I would recommend going over to the video version just for this section. <laughs> Just to, to just to pinpoint the exact moment where <laughs> where I realize something's off, but then it takes a little bit of time to be like, oh fuck, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm so confused right now. Um, Nonverbals. But you couldn't have that moment in an animated. You right? could. It's just inauthentic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think I think that humanizing part leads then, of course, to that emotional connection. I remember what I was saying. With, with tech brands specifically, so much of the experience that their customers and prospects have with the product, the service, is input-output, right? I put something into this thing, mm-hmm. and I get out whatever I'm paying them for. I put in English content, and I get out content in eight languages. Mm-hmm. I put in, you know, my bank transactions, and I get back a profit and loss, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's that's the interaction, and there's so rarely a person involved in those interactions mm-hmm. that you just become, I mean, my impression of QuickBooks is that it's just this big, like, bank of servers, right? They can do people's taxes mm-hmm. and businesses accounting and, and mm-hmm. whatever, and yet if I saw more from them that was actually QuickBooks people saying, you know, hey, these are my hobbies, Mm-hmm. Or, you know, this is what I do yeah. to code this so that when you put this in, you get that. Yeah. I'm going to value and appreciate that more, having heard from the people who are actually making it, yeah. potentially, yeah. than just that kind of constant, like, eventually take it for granted kind of thing. And then if I'm just judging a brand on the input-output, a competitor can easily come in and say, I can do the same yeah. thing for... 10% cheaper. Yep. And I got no reason to stick with who I've been using because there are Put, no people Putting those humans in it. adds value. Yes. To your brand. Sponsor break? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> mm, ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Cue depressing at first, but then turns to uplifting soft piano music. In these uncertain times, we face unprecedented challenges. And while staying apart has brought us closer together, we all need to keep looking out for each other. We're all in this together. For over three months, PandemicVoiceOvers.biz has walked with you side by side to help you find the best voiceover scripts and voice talent for your pandemic-related commercials. That Ford spot offering 0% financing for 72 months on a $45,000 truck? That's one of our spots. The Budweiser one about baseball? Also us. That Census Bureau pandemic spot? Us. And now more than ever, 
we can do more. So until the second wave begins, we're offering 19% off every usage of the words unprecedented, uncertain, trying, and home. Just visit pandemicvoiceovers.biz and use the code COVID-19 when you place your order. We'll get through these turbulent times together. Pandemicvoiceovers.biz So you, you're actually a part of the, the company. You're, you're, not, you're not on the board or a founder or anything. No, I'm, I'm one of the roster of voice yes. talent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, have, I have perfected my pronunciations of unprecedented. Um, uh, and uncertain. Um, Most people would yeah. rather look at you than hear you, but you have a really good voice. Thank you. <laughs> Is that a compliment? I, I don't know. <laughs> There's a net zero effect. There's a net zero effect in my self esteem <laughs> on that. I think. I'll let you know like midday Sunday when I'm still thinking about it. What did he say? <laughs> Anthony, I know it's Sunday, but can you send me the part of the podcast right after the sponsor piece? I need to analyze this. <laughs> I'm uh, Wait, did you say I'm not much to look at or people would no, I rather said people would rather look at you than okay. hear you? But sure. You, but you <laughs> But you have an amazing voice. I think that just lifts up both elements of, of your essence. If only there were an audio version, like an audio only version of Tinder or Bumble. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It's called Sight Unseen. I'm, I'm going to go register the, the it domain It sounds right like now. a sex hotline almost. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. Oh, so, um, you know, I think... Um, would you do that for me? One of the one of the nice things about pandemicvoiceovers.biz is is that they've been doing this for over three months. I know. And so they've really I mean they got in real early. They went public and, even in yeah. in the midst of all this. Yep, yep. They're, and they're, it's it's funny, there's so much certainty in this copy about the second wave beginning. It's almost like they know something that we don't. Yeah. Well, they're a subsidiary of the World Health Organization. Yes, aren't they? yes. The large, large private investment from the <laughs> WHO. Yeah. Um, and lots of Chinese uh, laboratory companies. All right. <clears throat> well, welcome to the new sponsor, PandemicVoiceOvers.biz. Yeah, thanks for, <clears throat> thanks for being here with us. Yep. Um, okay. Together. So, how? Yeah. How to make. How to go about making a live action scripted video for your business. How Looking at our bullets, I feel like we've, we've addressed some of this. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, um, especially going back to the part of the conversation about marketers um, who don't necessarily know how to craft their own messaging about their brand, that seems so condescending. But for those who do- I and, think a lot of and, people and, are struggling with that and they yeah. know it. Yeah, they, they're not prepared to say it out loud, but I think yeah. a lot of them know it. it we just, had trouble it, articulating oh, our brand. Absolutely, we talk about this all the time. You're inside the water bottle. You're inside, so you. It's hard for you this to is what see, you see. It's hard for you to see the label because you're on the inside of the bottle. So it helps to have someone outside, whether that's just a writer or it's a production company or an agency or whatever it is. It does help to have that that external resource to say, yeah. I don't see what you're talking about. Here's what I see, and then to kind of marry some of that. Well, we've got that going on right now with a with a client of ours where we know everything there is to know about this product, and we've written a script for a ninety second spot, and right now we either have to forget everything we know about the product and read the script without any context, which is doable, but hard to do, or bring in a writer at this point to read the script and say, tell me what you think about this. Mm -hmm. thing. What do you think this product does? Yeah. And so we write this stuff all the time. Um, and so we've got, you know, internal writing that we do that are professional writers, but then it, it helps, it really helps even for us just to bring in that outside, you know, no perspective kind of red team to say, this is what I think this product does based on this script. Uh -huh. 
And, you know, usually you end up saying, oh, okay, that's what they that do. That could just but be someone seemed, in sales. Sure. Sure. Or maybe someone less connected to the success of that's, this. That's what I, that's, or, or just someone who doesn't have the context about the product. A neighbor. I mean, yeah. there's, there's much value in that. Yeah. Any Joe Schmo. But, you know, and we've talked before about hiring writers, good writers. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, that, that comes from Jason Fried and, and David, Daniel? Hannah Meyer Hansen. Hannah Meyer Hansen. Daniel. Um, yeah, that's what I said, David or Daniel, <laughs> and you just said both. Um, uh, according so to Freed page. and Hannah Meyer Hansen, DHH. Um, uh, you know, when in doubt, hire the better writer. Um, I think that's always just, and, and we try to do that uh, as much as possible. People who are good writers know how to organize their thoughts, and you know, if you're bringing in a writer who is specifically a freelance writer to do this they're just that much better about understanding especially when you get into writing for video as opposed to writing for <clears throat> reading mm-hmm. um it there are ways to and i think we even shared an article in our newsletter uh today um about tips for writing for video um to write and and this is again something that freed and hannah meyer hansen talk about in rework is write like you're you're talking yeah. You know, and, and that's hard to do. We're so used to writing the way we write. But if you read it out loud at someone, it sounds completely different than just what you yeah. would say. And I can tell you from experience, reading God knows how many pages of transcripts from unscripted interviews, mm-hmm. we have complete very few sentences in normal conversation. Yes. Like, we do not speak the way that we were taught in school how to write sentences. Mm-hmm. There are ellipses and colons and semicolons and parentheticals and all kinds and of just lost ideas. I think it's because we have nonverbals yeah. that we can use as we speak to each other. And so much of it is two-way also, right? Right. Like, I was paying attention to what I was saying, and I think I trailed off at, like, you know, lost ideas or something like that. But that's because... I That's fine as a, as a period for me because you were picking up with something at that point yeah. too. So if you read the transcript of me, you'd be like, "Lost ideas? What is he talking about?" But if you then read your line next, you kind of fin- it's it's just part of working together for so long. We can finish each other's sandwiches. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so hire a good writer, whether they do the actual script writing or whether they're coming in in a review kind of process. We've talked about hiring actors over employees. But what about hiring good professional actors over less good professional actors? Because we've gotten plenty of auditions in the day from professional actors that are terrifying. Mm -hmm. And so I would I would I wouldn't want anybody to take away from this episode that they should, you know, not use Susie in sales. Mm -hmm. But, you know they know that their aunt's neighbor is a professional actor, so they just go ahead and hire that person Mm -hmm. because they heard that a professional actor was better than an employee. There are good professional actors and there are bad professional actors. I I wouldn't say, yeah, sure, there are bad professional actors, but those bad ones might just be bad for the role you're casting. Yeah, and I I think that's that's part of it, too. It goes into a deeper conversation about casting your actors Mm -hmm. because you've got to use someone who represents your brand Mm -hmm. um, and who can pull off your tone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got an Instagram friend who is a, who is a very successful uh, video host, right? She has done car commercials and uh, infomercials and all kinds of stuff like that. And she's a very good two camera teleprompter, very engaging host, but that's her niche. Sure. Right? That's what she does. If You wouldn't put her in a role. I wouldn't put her in a role where she was being a character. I would put her, and I would put her in, you know, I would I would call her like a safer choice for a brand that has, you know, that isn't trying to create a lot of brand personality. Again, you could humanize by using a person. But if your brand, you know, wants to play it safe for whatever reason, your audience, your market, whatever mm-hmm. it is, that's fine. She would be great to put into that. But if you're looking for someone to, you know, be funny Mm -hmm. or be quirky or whatever, she's just not right for that. Mm -hmm. And so, and so it's, it's, I mean, casting itself is a, I mean, is a mess. The technology 
to do it. It's these, ripe for disruption. It, it is. <clears throat> it is. It sucks, and it's it's <clears throat> nice to have someone uh, who's got experience doing this. Um, but sometimes you got to go with whatever you got. Yeah. And there are plenty. I mean, most of the platforms are online from like 2003. Or you can pick up the phone and call a, a, an agent. Sure, yeah. Uh, but if you can get a video audition, use whatever version of your script you have right now. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about finishing your script before you send it off uh, as the sides for the audition. Send the script you've got as it is now, because if you get six audition videos back, hearing that script being read back six different times, one, you're probably going to find someone who delivers it more like you're imagining mm -hmm. anyway. But you're also going to hear it read back to you yeah. six times. Like, I get lost at the back yeah. end of this thing. Yeah, or you're going to realize that, like, this takes two lines too many to get to where yeah. it is. And so it's just a great feedback loop for your script. And it doesn't cost anything to get auditions. That's true. That's true. So, I mean, don't abuse the system, but, like, use it according, like, uh, accordingly. Use it to help you. Be ethical. You, yeah. <clears throat> and then... Um, Would any any um, tips on casting? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's... The hotter, the better. The hot well what you what no, you do is not, you, you it, create is, you need to stay away from that you, little tip. There. You create two lists. You create your <clears throat> I'm casting for this role list and then you create your like I'm gonna figure out how to stalk this person on Instagram and slide <laughs> into the, their DMs. Um, no, you it, and what's so difficult about this stuff, especially for videos, so many of the pick lists that you'll get are just headshots. They're mm, yeah. And it's virtually impossible to to select someone that doesn't have a video reel attached. Mm -hmm. Even if it's some like short film that they did for a film school project, at least I can see hear what their voice sounds like. Right. See what their facial expressions were and extrapolate. But it's just so difficult when you have a headshot to say, yes, this is a person I want to get a video audition from. You're you're just seeing That's why I love slates. They they give you they open up the book. You right now. You just see the cover. So what's a slate for for everyone um, who doesn't know? Hi, I'm Justin Plant. I'm working with Storyboard Media Agency, and I'm auditioning for the role of whatever. Yeah. And that's a slate. It just gives you. It opens up the book so you can see what their voice sounds like, what their little mannerisms are. Like all of a sudden, you're like, oh, she's five ten. She's huge, or or like, or or. Oh my gosh, she put on weight or whatever. It's like it's just a very current representation of who that person is. Yeah. yeah. In, in, a, in a much more, in more depth than yeah. a picture. And it's not to say that putting on weight is necessarily bad. It's just, it's in not a what headshot, the photo looks like. Yeah. This is a different looking and those person are, than headshots what they are, are doctored now. Yeah. to look good. Um, yeah. But this isn't a modeling job, this is a, an acting job. And I also think it's important to to just put all the performance. That, one, you have to extrapolate what you think they can do on set with direction. Because an audition has limited, if any, direction attached to it. Mm -hmm. Right? They've got, this is your character, these are your lines, and here's the script. Here's what's going on in between here. But they don't really know anything about the motivation of the character or what kind of tone you're looking for mm -hmm. necessarily. You also want to give them the opportunity. You don't want to give them too much information because you want to let them see what they can do with the right. character. Because oftentimes the really good actors are the ones that take it in a different direction than you thought it would go, and it's better mm -hmm. for it. Yep. Um, That's my favorite part is when you start to see, it's usually on callbacks or something where you might have gotten 40 auditions, and you're like, Holy shit! But these five are good. Well, and, and yeah, and I, the most recent the the auditions we're looking at right now, one of the one of the first audition first round of auditions, for me there was one person who stood out head and shoulders above everyone else. Just perfect performance, really good. I mean, just very technically trained, but she just isn't this role. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's fantastic, and so at least she's someone on the list of like, look, I would love to work with this person at some point. For some reason, her performance was just so perfect, but this character isn't perfect. Yeah. And so she didn't even make it to second round of auditions. Yeah. But she, so, so you can't just rank people on like who's the best. You really have to put them into like who could be 
this character? Mm -hmm. Who could be our company, mm -hmm. right? Who would be the physical manifestation of our brand or our company? So let's say we, we've written a script. Let's say it's approved, good, we're done with that. Um, let's say we've got our actor. What are some other things we have to check off our list? Well, we need to decide where to shoot the thing. Okay. Locations. So often locations become <clears throat> like a secondary character. Yeah. So I mean, some sometimes it's the difference between shooting in a conference room out the window versus, you know, with a whiteboard behind the subject. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's a location decision. Yeah. Um, and, and then sometimes it's like it's either going to be in this house or this house or this house in, like, three different cities. I mean, they're, they're, there's a wide range of things that you can consider for location, and I would certainly keep it within the, the scope of your project. Um, but, you know, often... <sighs> You, you can find yourself just walking around also doing during, during your regular life and finding yourself in new places and being like, this would be a really cool place to shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And, and so like, you oh, just find, I see really cool houses and like, I need to find a client that I could shoot in that house. Yeah. Cause I want to see what that house looks like yeah. inside. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's, and now we know the executive director of the Mo NC modernist. That's a, and U S modernist. No shit. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, that's, should I say it again? Yes. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, there's the aesthetics of your location. Um, there's, and, and I would even consider, you know, a practical location versus a studio location. I mean, that could be your office has an empty room. Yeah. And that may be the best thing because of the constraints you have. You have to get this done quickly. You can't pay for a location. Yep. Has the best audio. All your equipment's there. I've done that hundred times yeah I think audio I you know audio is definitely one of those concerns you need to consider uh, con <laughs> considerations you need to be concerned, concerned with <laughs> um, any other ways we could <laughs> yeah audio is one of those things you want to pay attention to yeah um, right because if you if you've got um, you know if you're gonna be in the lobby of your building because you think it looks great there's gonna be a lot of foot traffic don't go in there. the morning and a lot of echoes because there's mm -hmm. so often hard surfaces. hard surfaces in there um, <laughs> yeah, elevators opening and closing. Yeah, it's e even if those people wouldn't be in the shot, you're going to hear those heels clicking on the tile. And when you hear those things but don't see them, it can be very distracting. Yes, not that it would be necessarily great to see them either. But agreed, agreed. So audio is definitely a concern. Um, lighting is a concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what do you mean by that? Like, well, like I think what's currently there? There's what's there. Yeah. And like in, in this room, we turn off. We haven't turned on our actual fluorescent lights in our, any of our offices. Right. I mean, I mean, we don't, right, we have studio lights set up in here, so we're not even, we have the window with a blackout curtain so that we're not getting, we have full control over the light in mm -hmm. this room. You may choose a space that you don't have full contr control over the light, but you got to make sure that you're augmenting enough artificial light with the natural light so that your subject subjects are properly lit. Mm -hmm. And um, consistently lit. And consistently lit. We we did early on in this company. We did a series of interviews with some people uh, looking out an amazing <clears throat> window, looking out over uh, American, American tobacco. tobacco. Yeah, and it just happened to be part of their office. Sure, it was a little noisy, but we set up barriers with sound blankets and stuff like that. We use um, <clears throat> neutral density. neutral density gels on the windows, but. It was still a pain in the ass to edit because the sun kept going behind the clouds and coming back out. So as much as the neutral density gel helped us shoot through the window and expose properly so that you could see the background without it being completely overexposed and also see the subject, it was very inconsistent from shot to shot. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to consider, you just have to consider that. Another thing to consider, with lighting, sound, cameras, all those things, most of them require power. Mm, and it can yeah. be overlooked. Is, are, there enough, are there enough outlets or are you gonna blow a fuse? Some of that stuff. And, and so that's where I think you know, some of your crew can kind of come in and, and help you make decisions about your location. Um, if, you've, you know, if, if this is just you and one other person that are full-time employees, and you're just going out to shoot something like you don't need to 
you may not be able to hire a gaffer and a sound guy that go on scouts with you to see if this is suitable. You may just have to start to think, all right, yes, we can or no, we can't shoot here. I think I, <clears throat> I think we've gotten a little off topic too. We're talking about live action locations. Um, you can get away with more on a live action unscripted, like doc style shoot, mm-hmm. than you can for a scripted shoot. Yeah. So if you're it's planning just- on shooting in a lobby for an unscripted thing, yeah, you might be interviewing someone and you might have to edit out, you know, while or stop talking while people are, <clears throat> are walking by. But if you've got a host talking to camera and maybe you've got some blocking in it, like you know, cameras actually following them as they walk through. Mm-hmm. Or there are these kind of like, you yeah, know, scripted, scripted out yep. movements, yep. right? Blocking those kinds of things. Characters interacting, or if there's just one character, even if they're just talking to camera going through certain motions, you need to have that environment secured. Mm-hmm. You need to, from a continuity standpoint, make sure that if somebody's walking through the background, they're walking through the background in all of the takes. So that mm. when you edit together the different takes, that continuity, continuity is there. Yeah. So, so there's there's more leeway in the unscripted stuff than there is in the scripted stuff. And I think we haven't even really talked about necessarily the difference between like narrative scripted content and you know non narrative scripted content but like right there's like you could do faq videos uh-huh. or you could do a product walkthrough okay. right yeah those aren't necessarily going to have a narrative attached to right it. but then there's all of this content that again i would put higher in the funnel that might be more storytelling narrative driven and and that kind of thing too so i think the it's almost like there are three degrees of control you need over your set you've got the most leeway with live action unscripted the next most leeway with like live action non narrative, and then the least flexibility, mm-hmm. you know, or, or the most set security in like live action narrative yep. stuff too, just because you are the telling of control on your set that you want to have over your image. Yeah, you're telling a story Ramps with your up. visuals, and so you need to have more control over your visual environment mm-hmm. um, as you kind of get through uh, those yep. different. Um, so this is one of the more yeah. This can be one of the um, more involved types of video to create. Can be. Can be. Yeah. Um, And obviously animation can can as well. Um, It can get very, very intense with (laughs) certain types of animation. Yeah. But again, to me, I think the the big revelation in this episode is is it's, you know, with, with animation, with because most animation is scripted with scripted live action stuff. There's so much work and so much detail and so much prep that goes 90% of the work is done before the shoot. Mm -hmm. 70% of the work is done before the shoot. Whereas with unscripted stuff, it's like 70% of the work is done after the shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, And I never really thought about it that way. And I think that's, that's an interesting way. I'd love to hear from some of our, you know, fellow filmmaker um, listeners to see if they, you know, agree or disagree with yeah. with that um, with that. I don't want to say revelation, but at least to me, it's a revelation. Yeah. Um. All right. Anything else that we need to discuss about live action scripted content? Um. Not really. I mean, we have a whole other episode in the first five or ten that talks about production specifically, so we mm-hmm. don't need to go into all the roles. Yeah. But I would, if you're thinking about doing some production, live action scripted production, you may want to check out that that episode. We'll yeah, I, would, I, I think I think it might be worth talking about a director. We, we've talked about hiring a writer, hiring an actor. Mm-hmm. Somebody's <clears throat> got to direct it. Mm-hmm. And and uh, first, boy, did we learn this the hard way when we on the first project we worked on together. We went into the biggest shoot of the project that we were working on together without a director because neither of us knew better. Mm -hmm. Um, And that whole first day was a complete loss. It was the client giving the actor direction. It was the consultant giving the actor direction. It was us filming, but also kind of giving direction. It was was a disaster. Mm -hmm. Um, And there has to be... The role of a director is to be the one person... On set that the actor listens to, because there can be a whole lot of chatter behind the camera. 
you need to, and this is again, and the thing that professional uh, actors are used to doing, they don't listen to all the conversation. They listen to what the director tells them right. to do. There needs to be someone who makes the decision and communicates that to the actor, to the crew, to the you know, move this lid over there. I want, you know, uh, I want, I want this to look flatter. It's to you know, let's the, fill in those shadows, whatever. Or let's let's switch up this line and try this. That needs to come from one person. Mm-hmm. The director on set, they make all the decisions. Producers set the guardrails. Yeah. But directors need to make that decision. Yeah. And so and so that can be a camera operator, right? You could have the same person write the script, record the video, and edit the video, mm-hmm. but they need to go in prepared to be a director. Mm-hmm. And we do go into uh, more detail about directors in that in that previous episode, but it is something that was missing. And then, of course, the last part is hire a good editor, because a good editor. Our last episode, I think, it was our last episode with Mars. You know, we talked all about what it takes to be a good editor yep. and what editors like. You know, to work with how they like to work with directors. Again, me being an editor for however many years now, uh, I, you know. I much prefer to work on scripted projects than unscripted mm-hmm. projects. It doesn't necessarily mean you have less footage to work through. You just know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. And so you're finding the best versions of this, 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 mm-hmm. and this, as opposed to what can I make out of this mess of stuff. Right. Right. You have you have the the cover of the puzzle box yeah. in a scripted piece to know what you're, it's supposed to look like at the end. So that you can put the pieces in the right place. Unscripted is basically five hundred puzzle pieces without any reference image of what you're trying yep. to make. Okay. Yeah, I think we got through all the points. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's hear from our sponsor again, shall we? Let's hear it. Okay. Cue depressing at first, but then turns to uplifting soft piano music. In these uncertain times, we face unprecedented challenges. And while staying apart has brought us closer together, we all need to keep looking out for each other. We're all in this together. For over three months, PandemicVoiceOvers.biz has walked with you side by side to help you find the best voiceover scripts and voice talent for your pandemic-related commercials. That Ford spot offering 0% financing for 72 months on a $45,000 truck? That's one of our spots. The Budweiser one about baseball? Also us. That Census Bureau pandemic spot? Us. And now more than ever, we can do more. So until the second wave begins, we're offering 19% off every usage of the words unprecedented, uncertain, trying, and home. Just visit pandemicvoiceovers.biz and use the code COVID-19 when you place your order. We'll get through these turbulent times together. Pandemicvoiceovers.biz. I noticed uh, you kind of dialed up the the confidence a little bit on that read, and like maybe even uh, added a dash of patriarchy, kind of com- like, okay, daddy's here, I'm safe, kind of. As a professional voice actor, mm-hmm. you're not helping your editor if you give the same read every time, right? Right. Yeah. If you don't give them. I, some some people pride themselves on boom, it's the same every time. No, editors need options, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And so yeah, you got to try it a little bit differently every yeah. time. Yeah. I applaud that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Um, live action, scripted video. Uh, what do we want to cover next in this series when we get back to it? Uh, part three of types of video. We will discuss. Live action unscripted? Makes sense. Sure. All right. Unless we hear from you otherwise. That's true. That would be that would be nice. Um, Even one text could just sway this thing completely. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what we're going to plan, though. And until then, you know, rate, subscribe, uh, like. Nope, that's the rating thing. I read, uh, can I, can I, yes. my, did I send you... That's something from Instagram this morning. Oh, there's a couple different like after a while crocodile, toodaloo, kangaroo. No. Uh, I just did two of them. Chow for now, Jersey cow. Why you still here, white-tailed deer? Just piss off, gypsy moth. 
Go to hell, red gazelle. Kiss my whole woodland hole. <laughs> and off you fuck, crested duck. <laughs> <laughs> Off you fuck, crusted duck. <laughs> and he's gone. All right, well that'll do it for us. Um, and I suppose we cue some of the uh, the music. And then uh, as we sign up, I will uh, do my prepared monologue. Um, Need some help.